Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Cleaning and Cocktails. This is the hot new season three. Uh, I've got a lot of new episodes that I'm working on. This is a special episode for me because I've got a couple of friends, and I call them friends because we're all fellow cleaning business owners, but uh, I've gotten to know Robert and Christian uh, over the years, and we're friends now, right? We're colleagues, we're peers, uh, not competitors. We're actually helping each other, right? Uh, and we're having fun. We're having fun, guys. So. Uh, I have with me here Christian Espinoza from Wow BMS out of New York, New Jersey area. I know he's got a couple of states that he covers. Of course. We got Robert out of York Building Services. He's got a mm -hmm. badass business. I'm going to let him get into it as well. Uh, Robert, New Jersey, New York as well. Are you guys both exactly. overlapping? I didn't do this on purpose. I didn't do this we're on getting, purpose. We're, we're getting closer. <laughs> we're, in the, <laughs> we're getting closer. Uh, different, I guess, same areas, but I think yeah. I'm more towards the New York area, not towards New York City. That's my growth plan opportunity, but um, I'm more north in the state okay. of Connecticut and a little bit of the New Jersey area as well. But, yeah. but think about it, guys. So we are on an up. We are we are on a show together, all in a, in a sense competitors because we're all cleaning company owners, but yet collaborative because we all love talking shop and hanging out with each other. So yep. this is what the future of the cleaning industry is, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but you guys, it's called Cleaning and Cocktails. I got to give a shout out to our sponsor, Casa Azul. <laughs> and nice. what are you guys drinking? What are you guys drinking? Let me see. I'm drinking a Blue Moon. Blue Moon. One of my favorite beer. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Modelo. Modelo. Yeah. Cheers, yeah. guys. Cheers. Salud. Salud. Cheers. Salud. Salud. Yeah. Cheers, guys. So a, a little side note to you guys. We like to drink together, us three, just so you guys know that are watching and listening. We go to shows together. We go and hang out together. So this is going to be a fun one, guys. So I'm going to start with yeah. uh, Robert. Let's start with you. Because uh, what I want to say real quick before we get into you sharing, you know, you and yourself is, guys, My and correct me if I'm wrong, Robert, we met when I made a post about, hey, guys, you know, I think we're at mm -hmm. a base camp or something like that. We were in the I yeah. think Jordan's group. Yeah. Hey, uh, looking to acquire a company in the, in the East Coast, you know, Philadelphia, Jersey area, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Robert pings me back. But very quickly, I was like, ah, I don't think Robert's not ready to sell. But <laughs> I like this guy. Let's talk about it. But yeah. To that point. That's our sure. first conversation, and we are here today, many years later. Robert, tell us a little bit about how how York came to be or how Robert came into the cleaning industry. Sure, absolutely. Um, so I grew up in the industry, really. My father started his first business in 1984. Um, so I'm the youngest of three uh, by 11 years. So I was always trailing behind. Um, but uh, yeah, my dad um, is from Guayaquil, Ecuador, and uh, he immigrated here and um, was look, always looking for opportunity, you know, and his dream was always to have his own company uh, here in the, in the U.S. And um, so, yeah, so he uh, saw an opportunity. He went forward. He was uh, working at night as, a, as a, a supervisor for a cleaning company. He was a little frustrated with how these guys were running the business and uh, they were, you know, frankly, uh, bouncing payrolls and or payroll wouldn't come. And because he was a supervisor, he'd be the one, you know, to have to go. Bad news. Not give a check. <laughs> yeah, they had to deliver the bad news, you know. So after a while, and you know, basically, you know, people are like, hey, he's like, hey, I'm just a messenger, you know. And he's like, you know, these guys don't care about it, you know. And um, my dad uh, was just a great leader. Uh, he's passed now. And um, so I learned a lot of leadership skills from him. And, you know, he decided to go out on his own. And a lot of those workers that were there were, that weren't getting paid were very frustrated. And they, you know, ended up, uh, you know, moving over to that. So, um, so that being said, yeah, I grew up in it. I was, you know, cleaning toilets at, you know. 10, 11 years old. <laughs> uh, if I wanted to see my dad because he was working day and night, you know, I'd, I'd get in the van and no. go, go pick up trash and do, you know, uh, spot inspections, make sure our trash wasn't missed in an office building. And uh, yeah, and then eventually, you know, um, I always had another side of me. I wanted to do finance. So I got a degree in finance and I worked, lived in Manhattan for 20 plus years, worked um, for a bond rating agency uh, called Fitch for six years. And um, was kind of disconnected from the business, you know, and at that point we did a lot of retail. So we were doing a lot of regional Toys R Us stores and other like um, big box stores. And uh, yeah, we got a little crushed because, <laughs> you know, retail Toys R Us goes belly up every couple of years. Right. So um, we kind of took our eye off the commercial and went a little too deep into retail. Long story short, my father kind of pivoted and uh, doubled down on the uh, commercial side. At that point, my sister was involved in the business, my brother-in-law. 
they started to have a family and they kind of exited out as well. So my dad just kind of kept it. It kind of, we got from like a good mid-sized company to just kind of a small lifestyle type company. Um, and then uh, after, you know, working in New York for a while, I just kind of, I had my entrepreneurial uh, moment there where I, I had an idea that I was bringing to a managing director, you know, a guy was, had been in this company forever. He kicked me out of his office within two minutes saying, hey, we, no. you know, this is how we do it. We're always going to do it this way. Get out of here, kid. You know, we don't accept ideas. And I was like, wow, okay, I'm in the wrong place. And uh, I was kind of helping my dad with proposals. And um, along the way, you know, he'd send me like a commission check, and which I'd never expected. And I saw what he was doing little by little. It was kind of trying to bring me back into the business. But it was that particular moment. I was like, all right, I, you know, I kind of came to the point where I realized, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, by, by heart, you know, and, uh, and by nurture too. So I uh, struck a deal with my dad. I said, look, I, I'd you know, like to come back to the business. Let's build it up. And um, I said, bud, I need still need to have a gym membership and I want to live in the city. Yeah. And I, you, need to, <laughs> you need to match my salary, you know, because uh, I was in my 20s, you know. So that, those three things were important to me. And we're able to do that. And uh, yeah, over the years, we just built it up to where we are now. Um, and then my father, you know, had retired and went down to Florida. My, my wife joined our business uh, about five years ago, maybe five or six. Harmony. And um, so me and her run it together. We're the only family uh, in it now, but it's kind of a continuation of that. Yeah. So, yeah. I've been in janitorial for a long time. Dude. So a lot, of, nugget, a lot, a lot of nuggets that we're going to touch <laughs> on, but yeah. what I want to do is tie them into Christian's story. My story as well, mm -hmm. too. Like think about Robert, you said, so one thing I'm going to, I'm going to tie back, remind me guys is the finance part, Robert, that you have sure. that financial yeah. infatuation. Um, and then just you're in the business with your wife. It's a family business, right? So yeah. over over Big to time. Christian. Oh wow. <laughs> so you are you are you came to this country at I think twelve or thirteen years old, which yes. is cra it's crazy because I just literally I told you before this I was talking to to Funk, right? He came mm -hmm. here at sixteen. So talk and I think it's it's important for people to hear that part. So you came Perfect. at twelve. Talk about Perfect. when you yeah. when you came here at twelve, what what was that like coming to America at twelve years Perfect. old? Perfect. Yeah, I, I will initiate a little bit, I guess, uh, on my story. Um Obviously, I'm originally from Ecuador. I'm from the city we have of two Ecuador. Ecuadorians here. Uh, yeah, vamos, vamos. He's from Guayaquil. His father's Guayaquil. My parents <laughs> yeah. are from Quito, Ecuador. But um, yeah. ultimately, I came here. Uh, my parents came here to this country uh, first, and I lived with my grandparents in Ecuador for about two years. And then we came on board when I was uh, 12 years old. Um, my parents work in a chemical manufacturing company. Uh, the city that I came here to, New York, uh, was called Mount Vernon. And uh, they were very hardworking people. Uh, my parents' um, dream was always for us to get a better education. Obviously, coming in from where we were, coming from Ecuador, we didn't have that opportunity. And uh, my father was very big on education. So I focused myself specifically on uh, just educating because I saw them working very hard. And um, I said, you know what? I, I want to focus on education and give, give them my best. And from there, I educated myself, was able to... Um, get a scholarship to go to Manhattan College uh, to get my major in economics and finance. So I was able to go and uh, go into college and pay myself uh, through college. But while I was going through college, uh, obviously I worked uh, in my, uh, where my father worked in the factory. I worked in packaging, I did paper routes. I worked as a lifeguard. Uh, I worked as a substitute teacher just to pay myself up through, through college as well. Even though I got the scholarship, uh, I still needed to pay off for the books and everything else. Um, from there, I was able to also get a little bit, uh, a grant to get my MBA to go to Spain and I study uh, international business. So I was able to get my uh, my MBA in, uh, in Madrid. And from there, while I was there, obviously, I needed to also uh, myself work. So I worked uh, in an investment banking firm as a market analyst, and I was a paid internship. So that helped me with my daily living expenses and to pay rent. So I was there for almost a year and a half. And then I came back to, to, the, to New York. And then when I came back to New York, I worked in banking, uh, specifically a credit analyst and commercial lending. I did that for about maybe a, a year and a half, two years. And uh, I always, uh, I had the opportunity to meet, a, uh, actually I was uh, working for a, for a bank at that time. Uh, at that time, the, the name of the bank was Commerce Bank. And, um, I was there sitting on the desk. I always wanted to, besides banking, wanted to help my family and bring in an additional income because I know I have a younger brother uh, that was going to go to college and I wanted to see how I can obviously help my father to pay for my, my brother's college tuition. And uh, I always also wanted to help my parents pay off the mortgage. 
Um, so I looked into the website and I saw that, oh, wow, they're actually opening a, a new branches of the bank that I work with in the area where I am. And I say, you know what, <laughs> let me see if I can make a phone call and speak to the facility manager because I, it took me back to my childhood memories because my parents, in addition to working in the manufacturing, they also cleaned the manufacturer and also cleaned the, the houses mm -hmm. of the owners. And when I was 13, 14, I used to go and clean the factory with them. So I always had that notion of cleaning up from my childhood stories. And then I say, you know what, maybe there's an opportunity here. Maybe I can clean the bank that I'm actually working. I see that they're going to be opening a branch here uh, in, within two weeks. So let me make that phone call. <laughs> you know? So I took that phone call. I made that cold call. <laughs> you know? And then I made that cold <laughs> call. call. <laughs> yeah, it was just a pure cold call. I know he worked for the same bank that I work with. He was a facility manager. I was a credit analyst. And I just contacted him and said, I... Um, I spoke to the facility manager, I said, I, I see that you're opening about, uh, you're going to be opening a new location in the area of Westchester County, specifically White Plains, New York. And um, I would love to have the opportunity. I work for the bank, but my parents have a small cleaning company. I would love to have the opportunity to see if we can come in and see if we can help you. He said, I don't promise you anything. I know you work for the bank, but um, if you want to come in next week, uh, and we'll be able to see what we can do. I said, perfect, great. So. That was that one opportunity from there um, I when it. I made that I phone it. call. It was very exciting because that, that opportunity I came back home, very excited, spoke to my dad and said, Dad, um, I, I think we might be able to have this opportunity that we might be able to create an additional income. And then um, I said, Father, uh, the only thing that I need is I need you to come with me because I told them that you're the you're the owner of the company because <laughs> it's a yeah. conflict of interest. <laughs> it's a conflict, think, of yeah, interest. conflict of interest. I couldn't right. work for the same bank and, and clean the same bank as well. So um, I, I needed I needed the name of the company, and uh, at that point in time, the culture of the, of the bank that I work with was a big thing. It was a they had a wow factor. They wanted to wow the customer. It was the first bank that that opened seven days a week, late hours. Oh, and wow. Our culture was a wow. Wow, I just yeah, said oh wow. It was, it was a wow. <laughs> exactly. said, how do how do I connect the banking with the cleaning? You know, while I was there, I was like, you know what? Uh, maybe I call it Wow Cleaning Services. That was the original name uh, eighteen years ago, right? And then I said, well, I need a business card at least. I went to Staples and got a semi-gloss card and went in and printed out uh, in the living room, printed out a card. Oh, I, I love the pyramid. So I put the pyramid, I put wow on top and cleaning services on the bottom. And I had a business card and I met my father president. And then I said, okay, perfect. We got, a, we, got, <laughs> we, we got a business card now. So now father, I think we can, we can go. And then I got a nice suit. And you know, the, the time that I made that phone call was a Thursday. I had that appointment on, on Tuesday. So we went there. The only thing we had, obviously, was the opportunity and uh, the business card and, uh, and a nice suit because I work in banking, right? So yeah. We went <laughs> so there and uh, we went there to the actual branch and we were there sitting. Uh, I was there with my father and uh, it was in the conference, uh, conference glass doors. I could see the, actually, I could see the companies going in there because there were glass walls doing their big PowerPoint presentation. Um, they had the company logo, they had their cleaning supplies, they had, they had everything. They were ready. You know, they were professional companies. We, we weren't a professional company at that time. We just had that opportunity, no company at all. We just like cleaning homes, maybe the factory that my parents worked. Um, so we were last, we were last. And I, I started telling my father, I don't, I don't think maybe this was a great idea. Maybe, maybe we just leave. <laughs> <You know? laughs> my father said, no, we're, we're already here. You know, we just yeah. gotta go through it. Uh, you know, so he gave me that, that support. Yeah. So we went in there, um, and then uh, I, he, uh, and I spoke to the facility manager, and I said to him, uh, um, "I saw you. I saw these great companies that came in here. They were very professional, but I think um, I can offer you something different that maybe they're not going to be able to offer." Um, what I think I can do is I know exactly the expectations of the branch. I know the wild culture. I know that we want to make sure that every single spot and area it's a spot and it's clean. But what I'm thinking, maybe what I can do is maybe I can take a week vacation because you're going to be opening this location within the next week and you need a, you need a company now. I will take a week vacation now from the bank and me, my father, my mother, and my brother will work the bank. And I can assure you that the place is going to be a spotless, but if you're not happy with the cleaning, um, then you don't have to pay us, you know, but at least you'll give us the opportunity. And if you do, um, it will be a life changing, it will be a life changing contract for us and for my family. It will help my yeah. family tremendously. Um, just give me that one chance. Um, and I don't know what he saw in me, but um, he said, Christian, and they asked him, you know, just give me an opportunity. Is there a specific maybe ballpark budget or, 
of budget that you have, you know, I'm willing to work with you, you know, to make sure that I can make this happen for, for me and my family. And um, he said, Christian, um, he wrote it down in a, it's a napkin. He said, Christian, this is, this is the budget that I have. Don't tell me anything now. Go speak to your father. Come back in 10 minutes. So I went back, step out of the conference room, go went back to my father. And I look at the budget. I'm like, wow, I thought it was $2,500. I said, well, it's $2,500 to do a post-construction cleaning. I didn't know anything about numbers, Ricky, mm -hmm. but I knew that it was $2,500. It was a lot. It was, it was going to be money that gonna, was going to help my parents, right? Yeah. Pay deals or whatever they needed. So I said, father, I think we can do this. You know, you don't have to pay me. You know, I will work with you guys. I will take a week vacation, but this is money that's going to help you guys for anything that you guys need. So I said, Christian, if you think you can do it, then uh, let's go ahead and do it. So I went back. So I said, Andres, uh, yes, we, we, I think we can make it work with that budget that you have <laughs> and, um, I, the 2,500 budget. And he said, Christian, it's not 25, it's a, uh, it's 25,000. <laughs> You know, oh, that, that, yeah, it was 25,000. I was like, oh, it, that, difference. the joy we, that I had inside like, me, right? Like, I was yes, like, we Whoa, definitely can do definitely it. Yes. Can do it for <laughs> you know? yeah. So we went there. That was, that was a huge, 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 uh, huge win that I, that I felt even to this moment. I feel, I felt that joy awesome. of being able to Love get that water in one contract. And then from there, um, we performed great. Um, we did great. And then from there, I asked uh, the facility manager, he was very happy with the services. And I said, would it be okay for us to be able to um, work with you on the 45 other locations that you will be opening up in the next uh, five years? I would love to partner with you. Um, he said, Christian, um, if, you found, if your parents are the, cleaning, are the owners of the cleaning company, I think we're going to be able to work it out. So from there, um, uh, I made my father the owner of the company and I worked uh, at the bank during the day. And at night, we used to clean the, we used to clean the banks with my, with my parents. For, oh. for a couple of years, yes, until uh, awesome. finally I was able to step out of the bank, I took that leap of faith and left the bank because I realized that there is a lot of money to be made in, in the cleaning industry. Yes, there Not is. only were we only cleaning the janitorial, but we're doing periodical work, window cleaning, marble restoration, stainless steel, power washing. There was so much more. And the salary that I was already making in the bank, I was already making uh, only cleaning three stores. You know, I was cleaning three yeah. retail mm -hmm. branches. I was already making almost the same as this banking salary. So I realized that I, I needed to just take that leap of faith. And if it didn't work out, I didn't have a family at that time. I didn't have, I wasn't married. I didn't have any kids. So I said, if it doesn't work, I can always go back to bank. Right. Yeah. So that was, so think about it, right. That's, that's the awesome. moment. I love that. So you guys, you guys both had those moments, right? So cheers, cheers yeah, to those absolutely. moments. Guys. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so now let's talk about, because again, you know, everybody that's listening to like, uh, there's a lot to resonate with. Again, you guys, we all have similar stories. You know, I, I love yeah. hearing because I didn't know all that that you just shared. So it was helpful for me to hear that. But think about some some similarities, Robert and Christian, right? Is uh, you guys went to go off and get an education, right? Your right. parents were the ones that were working. We all yep. saw our parents working. You guys saw what work ethic was. How, let's talk about, you know, each one of you guys, talk, you know, jump in. How critical was it for you to see what work ethic was to then know that, hey, not that you have to go out and do better, but that you know what you have to go do and meet and exceed because you guys mm -hmm. saw that firsthand. So Robert, if you want to jump in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I feel like I learned that at a very young age. Um, so we grew up in Northern New Jersey. My last name is Riva de Neira. <laughs> I have 11 continents and uh, I don't know how many vowels in my last name. But, um, <laughs> having to learn I learned I would say by kindergarten you know when I had to learn how to spell my my last name I wasn't a Smith or a Murphy or you know no offense to anyone else but like yeah. I was different you know what I mean I knew I was Latino and uh, my parents you know spoke Spanish first I you know, we spoke Spanish in the home and uh so I kind of knew in a weird way that we always had to I don't know we always had a little extra motivation to like work harder and you know to establish ourselves you know my parents um left um you know when they arrived uh, in new york they lived in brooklyn well they lived in brooklyn i was born there. i was born in jersey but uh i remember it was a very big deal for them to leave brooklyn to get a house in jersey a small little cape cod house in north jersey and like that was like huge for my parents you know so i always um you know grew up i mean my dad worked all the time you know uh he well he actually did um like facilities um he worked for chase manhattan bank had an opportunity there and uh so he was like he got his black seal uh, license. He worked down, um, you know, down on 20 Pine Street um, in Manhattan. 
uh, running the building. So he was always in facilities and he just worked all the time. He started his cleaning company on the side. And he always had two or three jobs. His first job in the country was as an elevator operator uh, yeah. in on the in the Upper East Side in the '60s, back in the day when you had to like close the door and wear the whole uh, uniform and all that. So um, yeah, we just grew up. I mean, it's everything, you know. So I think that's where, where my drive comes from still, because I feel like we still haven't landed. You know what I mean? So as yeah. first, gener- got- first generation born here, there's so much more to do. You know, it's so like you, we, me, we, uh, you got moving. the feeling of like we still got work to do. Right. Like, oh, yeah. that's how, Absolutely. It, it, when people yeah. say, oh, oh yeah. man, you, you know, Ricky, you're doing too much or you guys, you know, you're trying to do too much. It's like, I'm not doing right. enough. I, yes, exactly. we, we still got to exactly. do more Christian. So yeah. talk about, I mean, again, cause dude, it's funny. Like you guys both have similar paths, right? Like your parents yep. got into the cleaning industry somehow, some way first. Yep. And then here come the two, you know, you guys both. Again, when, we'll talk about the education part and how that played a role. Mm-hmm. But Christian, how seeing your father working like that? I would say, yeah. Uh, what does that do work, for you? I guess the work ethic, not only on my father, I will say my mother too. Well, as your well. mother too. Yeah. yeah Let's talk about the mom too. Mom too. Huge, yeah, Absolutely. that's a huge factor, right? <laughs> so to that extent, um, I they work with my father when he came to this country. Obviously, uh, um, he came in twice to try to came to Mexico to the border went back to Ecuador, got him, got back to Ecuador twice, but his perseverance of being able to come in to get the American dream, right? For me, that was a huge thing that how he was able to actually get to the United States um, was because he was, uh, he also enjoyed running. He was a marathon runner. So he won the marathon of Ecuador and then they sent him to come to run the New York marathon. So to that extent, uh, that discipline that he had and the consistency that he had, I think I have that in me. Mm. My mother as well. Yeah. She, hold on, hold on. So are you telling yeah. me you run the New York Marathon? Is that what you're saying? My father, when he came to this country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me, not me. Not me. <laughs> I run. I, yeah. I, I'm going to try to work and make, see if I can make where's, it run. But where's, I, your, I, where's, I, your, where's your morning run additions? Come on, catch up. I know, I know. I, I, right. Only do 5Ks, you know, three miles. <laughs> you know, yeah. Maybe three times a week. But uh, <laughs> not the big right. marathon. Uh, I have a herniated disc, so unluckily, that's well. I don't do too hard to, no, but, but dude, it's work not, that's of, discipline, right? Discipline yeah, and then, work. Uh, exactly. You know, and then he came to work and he was a regular factory worker, but in a couple of years, he worked himself to become the right hand of the owner of the factory where he worked. And that's how he got his papers, right? That's how he was able to get a sponsor and be able to get his papers. And then from there, he became a leader because out of that factory, there were about maybe 50 workers and he hired pretty much all of them. And they're all from Ecuador, actually for the most part, and um, he became a great leader in the town where he was at. Um, so to that extent, he was an example of how I wanted to do in terms of how to come into a country, start from scratch, and obviously he did, he was able to do that and succeed. I said, well, now if he's giving me the opportunity now to be here, get that education, well, now I have to work a lot harder to uh, evolve and be better. Obviously, in our education now, in our, how we come in from other countries, we always want to be better than your parents, right? If you were reach this mm-hmm. this path, you, you know, I want to be, I want to be better. Yeah. I want to evolve. carry the baton. You got to carry yeah, the baton. Exactly. I want to be able to, to be the one that created that legacy. My father was able to get me here. I want to be the one that can change that generational, that generation into creating mm-hmm. a, a generational wealth for, for my family and my kids. I want them to have it obviously easier, awesome. but at the same time, have the things that I didn't have um, yeah. and, and that my parents didn't have. Um, so for yeah. me, that was a big factor. Work ethic, uh, obviously, my mother and my father. <laughs> yeah. So, so you guys, now let's go. Let's go to again. It's it's actually playing itself here in front of me. Is Robert and Christian? You both have finance, economic backgrounds. You went to school for mm-hmm. that. Robert, how did that? Because here, I I look at it as a as a very it's a dangerous recipe for success because mm-hmm. work ethic. It's it's you have to know what that is to 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 bring that to a business owner mindset, right? Yeah. But you guys also have a financial economic background. That's huge in my opinion. So how did, how did that help you? Not immediately, but like as you become and you're growing the business, like, do you think that was a key, key part of your success is having that? Not just, again, I got mm-hmm. a marketing degree. Right. I used 
that much. You're great at marketing, but, by the way. Uh, I'm you're, marketing, very good but, okay. you're killing but, it, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, not that marketing degree, though. That marketing degree was so different. But like for you guys, let's talk about your education that you, because remember, yeah. so you didn't go into the business right away. Both of you guys went out. You went out, you ventured, mm -hmm. you went into commercial banking, you went into finance, financial institutions. Mm -hmm. Robert, how did that how did that help you though when you came back into the business and started leading the forefront? Yeah, uh, I think tremendously. You know, just knowing how to read a P and L, um, knowing how to read financial statements, understanding the, um, you know, the importance of it and margins and contribution margins and all that. Um, you know, my my father also, to Christian's point, was very. He didn't have, you know, I think he had. He didn't. I don't think he finished high school. Like he didn't have much of an education. He had work ethic and he had. Um, vision, you know, and leadership. And uh, so for him also, you know, um, education was very important, you know, so um, yeah, I would say one of the things like when I came back to the business, you know, um, the first thing I saw was like, okay, why are we doing this? You know, I call it like Popo style. Like this is still like, you know, this is not on a computer. We're still using clipboards and everything. Pen and a paper. Little, like, you know, pen and, pen and paper. paper, you know, yeah. but everywhere. I'm like, all right, listen. So I, I honestly, like working for a much larger company, I learned like the systems and processes. I learned the mindset, the the, the organization part of it, you know. Um, and I was able to bring that back to like you know a small family business essentially, and use that to clean up our foundation and help us you know grow um, not chaotically but organized. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so that so that's a big deal. And then just being able to. Um, you know, just be able to sit down with CPAs and advisors and, and know what they're talking about. You know, um, you know, my father, uh, you know, he spoke English very well, but he was always working. So it's like, you know, he didn't uh, yeah. have time to go study proper English. He knew, you know, conversational and, and business. Yeah, exactly. And, and he, he was a handshake kind of guy. Everyone loved my dad. Then was Alberto. And uh, so everyone loved Al and everyone trusted Al. And he had integrity, he had loyalty, and he'd work his ass off. And that's, you know, many of the contracts were one on that, on those qualities, you know? So, so yeah, so I think just having a financial background is helpful. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I think it, it can quicken, you know, the, the learning curve a little bit. And, uh, and just with anything, it just gave me confidence to like, know, yeah. you know, that I wasn't getting taken advantage of, you know, um, it gave me the confidence to talk to a banker to, you know, uh, interview CPAs and find all the support network that you need to run a business and scale a business, you know? So, um, so yeah, I think it's um I think it's a it's an added added benefit. Added value. Definitely not, yeah, yeah, added value, but definitely not necessary per se. So, you know, but uh, I'm happy I have it. For sure. So so Christian, now let's so we talk about finance having the background, but you also now you're in commercial lending, which I think is another important piece, right? Because another pain point that we see with fellow cleaning company owners, right, is access to capital, understanding yep. how to how to use capital to grow. What Jumping into the commercial lending space, Christian, like, and then you're, sure. and then you're, and then you're going back into the building the cleaning company. Now, how did that help you? For me, when I obviously I transitioned, obviously I was doing during the day banking and cleaning at night. But um, for me to be under, to be able to understand the balance sheets, because in order for me to lend money, I needed to go and do the, fin the financial analysis, uh, taking a look at the financial statements, uh, balance sheets, uh, profit and loss reports. So I was very familiar to how to properly structure mm -hmm. different companies because. I did a lending for many small businesses in the area. I know exactly what needed to be done, what was the structure and what were the profit margins. I took a look at different type of different companies and uh, I was fascinated. I really enjoy uh, looking at the history of the data because numbers do not lie, right? It tells right. a history of, of who, who the owner or the CEO or the president, it's how the CEO or the president is managing their company with just looking at the actual data. And, specifically your numbers, right? Mm -hmm. How are you managing? How are you pivoting? How are you conducting your profit margins, um, um, your labor expense? Uh, so for me, uh, knowing and understanding um, the numbers, is, I think is very fundamental, especially for a small business. When you're starting up, yeah. you want to make sure you understand specifically your bottom line, right? What is your overhead costs? What are your mm -hmm. expenses? And, and what are your profit margins? Because certain people, when they start their businesses, might think they're making 40 or 50 or 60% profit margin. But <laughs> after you start calculating your um, your insurance, your workers' compensation, you know, your technology fees, software that you use, uh, operational, you know, your overhead stuff, your admin stuff, your, uh, your battle line starts deducting, right? Your overhead cost starts increasing. So your profit margin might be slightly, maybe 5%. 
So for me, uh, to pivot and understand the financial statement was a fundamental part that's going to that help me succeed. But also understanding how a company culture is formed uh, within the yeah. bank that I used to work because there were a huge uh, culture, right? So it was a huge wow culture. So from there, I was like, you know what? Let me embrace the wow, right? And then we embrace the wow. I still maintain the wow. We changed the cleaning services, what we call the building maintenance solutions, because I wanted to tailor specifically to commercial office buildings um, and more into the multi-tenant spaces. And so I say, you know what? What do we do with the wow, right? How do we embrace wow? And then we say, you know what? Let's embrace wow and make it part of our core value. So now the wow, um, we stand out. Wow represents working with integrity. The O is operating with excellence, and the other W is a winning attitude, having an attitude of gratitude, a mindset. So now yeah. that's what we use to recruit our people, and our team needs to be aligned to not only our company values, but our company mission and vision. So ultimately, so, uh, having that so, background, it, it, it was great. You know, so, that's awesome. So it's beautiful. Robert, did you did you, did you see how he like he's got that on point? Like, I yeah, feel yeah, like he's yeah, done that. Course. He's done that I on many it. presentations. I'm, pr I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we like. Waiting on yeah. it to mindset, yeah. right? Yes, yeah. uh, that was I a big thing. People are think just awesome. wow is an expression. Yeah, you walk into this place. Yes, place is wow, but we want to wow you yeah. with excellence, right? With integrity, yeah. with the with the type yeah. of work that we do. Because many cleaning companies are going to come in and say they're going to do great, but What's the difference? What's the big differentiator? And for yeah. us, that wow factor, it's, it's our culture, it's the people. Ultimately, it's the people that we work with. Um, I have the mindset of um, that I call myself like a servant leader, right? When we have a pyramid, rather than you being on top, you're an inverse, in better pyramid, where right. I yeah. serve and my frontline employees are on the top of the pyramid. Oh, yeah. We have management and we're, we're at the bottom. I'm on the bottom because I want to make sure that I serve my employees. I want to make sure that they have the right tools, the right software, Everything that is needed for them in the right training and certification that's going to put them to success and to create that career. Yeah. Because think about it. Things, that's, you know? that's a good point, Christian, too. It's yeah. like, because think about it, we got to put the weight on our shoulders, right? As leadership, Always, yeah. the weight is on our shoulders, but for good reason, right? We have to, we have to lead from the front, right? Like my cousin mm -hmm. Tony always, that's his biggest thing is about leading from the front. Um, you put everybody on top. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It may be heavy sometimes, but that's why you have support. So, which yep. leads me to next is, uh, Robert, you talked about you and your wife, mm -hmm. your wife joining the team, right? Yeah. Uh, I think you said that is, so it's only you and your wife that are from family, but like how, Correct. how helpful has that been? Cause then I want to get into some stats. Cause just so the audience knows too, again, I throw these stats out. So Robert and Christian, just so you guys know too, our industry is very fragmented. 93% mm -hmm. of our industry is operating at under 1 million in revenue. I have the honor of having guys that like you guys, you guys are in the top 7%, right? You guys mm -hmm. are above the 1 million in revenue. So what I want to yeah. talk about is the building blocks that got us there. Uh, obviously, Christian, I'm going to touch on faith with you because I know faith is a big piece of, for you. Fa family, mm -hmm. of course, too. But Robert, your wife, your wife is in the yeah. business with you. So how did, how, yeah. when five years ago, when she came on board, did you see a shift? Did you see yourself like reach a new level of, we got this, we're going to grow, we're going to scale. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Uh, my father was getting older. Um, and he, uh, was, you know, little by little dialing it back and it was just a lot where we were just growing and it was just too much for me to take on. Um, and, uh, my wife is, um, part Mexican. My last name is Trujillo. So she's uh, Uno Rubia. So, so that's why uh, you got Rubia. such a badass, e that's why you got e a badass Uera. company. Uh, you got to make exactly, it right. So I, I have a wet on my side, um, you know, she's blonde Mexican, you know, but, um, yeah, you know, she, again, came, you know, we were kind of come from similar backgrounds, you know, like she has the same work ethic. Uh, she was a maitre d' at a very, uh, I don't know, fancy, popular, hip, you know, um, restaurant in the meatpacking district in New York at the time. And, uh, they were closing. They, they had a issue with the lease, um, on, on the building, which is, you know, unfortunately happening every, every every other week in New York. Um, so she was looking for a shift, you know, and I was talking, I was like, look, you know, you can't essentially quote, you know, be on your feet forever, you know, just working in a restaurant. And I was like, why, you know, have you considered, like, would you consider helping me with the business? Cause I have more than I can handle. And I was kind of like, you know, we're still kind of, uh, you know, rebuilding the business, building it back up. And it was just too much, you know, there's only so many hours in a day. And um, I really needed someone I could trust. She saw me living it and breathing it and doing it 24 seven anyway. So, um, you know, kudos to her. She jumped in and it made a, ma a massive change. You know, she, um, 
we're very careful about staying uh, in each other's lane. We have different, you know, different um, strengths, you know, so Harmony brings a lot of, um, I would say a lot of empathy, a lot of uh, culture with her. Uh, I can be a little bit more analytical and more finance, you know, no, more sir, sir, like numbers. You're, you're my brother you know. and my mom and I am <laughs> the other right. side. I'm like, I'm like right. Harmony. I, <laughs> yeah. I can't fire yeah. anybody. I am not the person to be in <laughs> right. HR. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Fire, fire quick. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so she brought a, a lot, uh, a lot of that, you know, just again, just someone I could trust and we were in it together, you know, we're married, we're in this life together, you know, all we have is each other at the end of the day. So, you know, um, she did not grow up entrepreneurial, you know, per se, her, her father had a small business at one point, but uh, he hurt his back. He was doing pouring concrete, hurt his back, had to pivot and became a teacher. <laughs> so, um, you know, I grew up with like the um, ups and downs and the different business cycles and stressing for a payroll or a client that didn't pay or all that stuff, you know, that happens. Um, it's just part of the journey. Right. So, uh, she's been amazing. She, uh, definitely, I would not be here today without her, um, wow. because of her hospitality background, we were able to pivot again and we have a niche doing uh, overnight specialized cleaning for Michelin star restaurants in New York city. Um, so we keep a lot of the high end, busy ass New York city restaurants humming seven days a week. Dude, that, um, that is, and for crazy. people to know, for people, for, <laughs> yeah. for people to know, crazy cause Christian, I, I know you would back me up on this. Like dude, yeah. restaurants hard. stuff. <laughs> so hard. hard. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you are, if you, and you got it down. Like I literally thought about you yesterday yeah. cause we're bidding yeah. on a, at a big restaurant group right now. And it's like, right. it it's a different beast, man. Uh, it's a so different kudos beast. to you. Kudos to you. Thank you. But Appreciate it's a niche. It. Yeah. That is definitely you're probably, you're probably competitive then in it because I'll tell you once one group uses you, every yeah. other group wants to use you. Yeah, we, we've grown. I mean, a lot. You know, I would say a little bit more than I, than I'm comfortable with in that <laughs> in that vertical. You know, um, <laughs> but coming out of COVID again, you know, commercials been a little, you know, a little, 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 not a little slow or a little unpredictable. I guess I would say, but uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. our growth has been um, crazy in hospitality, and a lot of it is. These are all big name places. So if you have the name recognition, all you work with them, yeah. then you, you're certainly going to get list. the other. Yeah. Yeah. So we're working in hotels, like posh hotels, boutique hotels, doing the uh, the food and beverage common areas. And um, chefs moves, uh, move, GMs move. You know, we have a, a client, uh, you know, this executive chef who we love. He's like, mostly chefs are just brutal. <laughs> they just beat you up all the time. This guy sent us like the most glowing email ever, you know, on his personal Gmail. He's like, hey, I'm leaving. I'm moving to another place. And as soon as I settle in, you know, you're coming. I was like, okay, awesome, you know. That's dude, so it's that's just a, you know things like that. So it's it's been amazing, yeah. you know. So and uh, awesome. Harmony, uh, Harmony speaks that language too, so she can go talk nice. to the chefs. And I never worked in a kitchen or anything like that, or yeah. attended. So I'm more of a buildings guy, a facilities guy, you know. But uh, so yeah, she's she just made her stronger. It's amazing. It's awesome to uh, go through it together. Not always easy. Um, yeah. And the hardest part is really uh, turning it off, you know, being able to go out to dinner and like, you know, we, we, you know, we'll make a point. Like, all right, we're not talking shop, you know, at all. Don't look at the, don't look at, it's like, don't look at the floor. Don't look at the ceiling. Don't exactly, look at, yeah. don't look at the, go in the bathroom, close your eyes. No. Yeah. We, we have to like check ourselves. Like, listen, we're on, you know, it's date night. Like we're, we're just, yeah. we're, we're, we're civilians. We're talking about yeah. meetings, we're talking about sales, you know. Um, so that's the hardest part. I think turning that off when you work with your spouse, you know, uh, I'm sure you experienced that as well. Yeah. And uh, what I would say, you it's, the, hard, boundaries. <laughs> it's you know? the hardest part, but it's, I still enjoy it though. Cause like the fact that I it's can amazing. talk a yeah. shop with my yes. wife yeah, and my family, like, yeah, yeah, it turned it off. But at the same time, it's cool to have it on whenever you want it though. So yeah. I mean, she gets it cause she's living it. So all the crazy hours, yeah. all the crazy, you know, all the, all the yeah. roller coaster ride, you know, all the, you know, the amazing opportunities that happen. The you know unfortunate you know failures that that happen sometimes you know yeah. it's part of the entrepreneurial journey and cleaning it's like ten x you know of uh, yeah. those experiences so it's been so, great. Over over to Christian because I know you live the same way as we do here. But not, for me, it's it's like you relate. Not, so Christian, talk, but yeah. I also want you to talk about your faith too because I know sure, your I, faith is a big thing for you. Perfect. Yeah. No. Definitely relate with you, Robert and Ricky, because um, uh, in the years later after I got married, I was married thirteen years ago. Uh, I had the staffing, but then was we were first staff with a, with a, we need a, a, somebody that can help us uh, manage the finances, right? I was, I had a finance background, but I needed somebody that I can trust. So about seven yeah. years ago, my wife stepped in uh, as well, and she's uh, the chief financial officer. So she handles more, she's more on the analytical piece, right? 
So she handles mm -hmm. the finance piece, uh, which is great. Um, you know, obviously her major is in international business and she has a master's as well. So she, I asked her, you know, because we have three kids, I have three kids. So she was uh, sort of working part time and then um, it just led to the opportunity for her to come in on board with me and work in the company. And, and it just happened, like it just transitioned. So now we do, I do yeah. work with, uh, with my wife, but there are two different departments. It's not like we're dealing with, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm talking with her on a daily basis, obviously. She has the mm -hmm. finances. I deal a little bit more on the strategy side, yeah. the vision piece of it. Uh, I still like the business development and relationship piece of it. So I am very thankful and I wouldn't be where, where I am today. Obviously 18 years ago, we started with, uh, with my family, right? That was the, there was a great support system. I, I always like to say that they were the co-founders of the company, because if I didn't have mm -hmm. the support of, of my mom and my father and my brother, I wouldn't be where I am today, but also on the second stage of the growth of the company where I grew it from three or four employees to now we have over 250 employees and we do about $10 million in sales. Right. Um, that was a huge part of the support of my wife on the finance piece mm -hmm. of it, because not only she helped me with the finance piece of it, but also with the HR piece. So she does a little bit of that. And now she manages and oversees the department. Right. So we have an accounts payable, accounts receivable collections department, but she oversees everything and she's like the controller of everything. So for awesome. me, that was a, that was a big thing. So I, you know, I want to make sure and give a shout out to my wife <laughs> because she definitely <laughs> shout out, shout out to the wife. Yes, yes, Viviana, shout out to Viviana, the wife. Viviana, <laughs> yeah, Viviana, she's from you know, my country, from Quito. And, uh, you know, when I got married, I met her in Ecuador and then she left everything for me and came to the United wow. States. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, um, all her family is from there. And actually now in the summer, my kids are actually there in Ecuador. And she went, I always promised my wife that in the summer. So, since she left everything right um, for me to come to the United States, uh, she goes in the summer to spend time with her family and my kids go there as well, because I wanted to still understand the culture of where wow. I come from. I want mm -hmm. them to understand the language. I want them to see a little bit of uh, where we come from. Right. I think that's a, that's a big thing. And when, yeah. I, you know, when we talk about faith, right, I think for me, the faith piece of it, um, I don't want to tell you Ricky that at the beginning, when I was 20, 21 years old, I was a man of faith, right. It took me, it took me to uh, under, uh, go through many different challenges, many different situations along my life to get me to uh, become a, a man of faith. So to that extent, you know, um, it got me to where I am now, reflecting on the things that I um, that I worked through it, but I hold on to, to that faith um, uh, of God. But there was a moment in time where I didn't have that and I felt uh, I felt lost, right? I felt like I, you know, I, I, I had an imbalance, right? Yeah. Because I was very passionate about my business. But at the same time, I was forgotten my family, right? So you have to have that that balance, and it's very difficult to have yeah. that balance because you either give one hundred percent to the business, but then you're suffering on the on the family side, right? Mm. So I was trying to figure out uh, the best way possible to to try to balance that together, and through faith, um, it has helped me uh, be, uh, overcome many of those challenges, and and now it, things flow much easily. But uh, for me, uh, I'm a big faith on, on my side in terms of understanding and believing, uh, believing in, um, I will say God has ha allowed me to, to just do things that I didn't think I could do. Right. Just believing in yourself, believe that there's somebody mm -hmm. that it's always taking care of you. Um, you know, I have that portrait behind me of, of Jesus, right? Um, when I came here, uh, when I was 13, when I came here, when I was 12, um, and uh, a year later, I used to go with my parents to Gar shells. I used to like look stuff, you know, for. <laughs> I mean, and then, uh, uh, you know, this, this picture is like almost 25 years old. I looked at the portrait there and, uh, and I really liked it. It cost me like 50 cents, but I really liked the color, right? <laughs> yeah. and I, had that, I had that portrait of Jesus ever, um, since I was 13 years old. Wow. I'm about 41 now, right? But I, I always look and I say, God is always looking, looking in my back, right? He's always, yeah. he always got, He's got your back. He's he got, got your my back. back. Great. So, yeah. Yeah. He's I always been that. with Love me that, throughout that journey. Yeah. yeah. So guys, let's talk. So that great stuff, you guys. This is again. It's just like I didn't even mean for it to continue and create the next segue. But so you say, got your back. So I want to talk about, you know, not just us as Latinos, right? But like us as a small, because I consider myself as a small contractor still, right? We're, mm -hmm. We could say we're small to medium size, but every single one of us here started at zero. Yeah, zero, and we want our first contract, and we want our next. And then we got bigger and bigger. Um, how important would you say? Because for me, it's been massive. But like, 
the last few years, us getting to know each other, creating a network. Mm -hmm. How important would you say to the small contractor that just started yesterday, or it's they're in their first year, they're in their third year, they're struggling, right? Because we know the failure rate is high. This yeah. is a very tough and competitive industry if you try to go at it by yourself. How important mm -hmm. is community in building this network of people that you can talk to? Uh, and any one of you guys can jump in, but like, how important is that for you guys? Do you think that has yeah. made an effect on you? I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, I think it's been life changing. It's it's everything. It's uh, entrepreneurship can be a lonely road. It is a lonely road. You know, being at the top is a lonely road. You know, you have to have all the solutions. Uh, you know, all all the answers. Know everything, even when there are none. <laughs> you know, there might not be any solutions. You still have to believe in one and, and come up with it. So it's a lot of pressure. It's lonely. It's hard, you know. So um, for me, you know, uh, re-engaging really, you know, I kind of got, I was networking, you know, involved in networking groups and all for, for a while, which is not the same. Networking is not peer groups, at least in my eyes, right? And uh, so I reconnected with BSCAI, which has been great, you know, and then getting to meet you, Ricky. And uh, I remember, uh, I think it was uh, the second cleaning cocktails that I attended, right, that you guys put on. And um, it was just awesome. Like that, that, that was actually where I met Christian, you know, and uh, yes. it was a cleaning mm -hmm. cocktail. Yes. And uh, we just connected right away. Um, I think we're in the same hotel. We took a, a cab yeah. to, the, uh, to your office, you know, uh, you know, hung out late night. Uh, yeah. We were like in each other's pockets for, <laughs> for like two or three days, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, holding hands on the beach now. <laughs> no, uh, it, was, it, was <laughs> no, it was amazing. But, uh, yeah, but that's, I mean, you know, and, and Christian, you know, like, I, I, like when I see you, like, you know, we run, ran into each other actually at the Yo House. Uh, in New York, not too long ago, I saw him right away. I just dropped everything, gave him a big hug, you know. Yeah, and I feel the same way. Uh, same way with you, Ricky. It's like it's transformational because it's not the peer groups are everything, you know. And having people that you know, particularly that are in, in our industry, janitorial, it's just we're it's such a unique experience and and uh, industry that even you know someone that owns a, a plumbing company can't relate to what we do, you know what I mean, or a different kind of uh, business just can't relate on the same level. And I think it's everything, you know, I, I learned from, from all you guys, you know, I think um, being humble and just always being open to learning and like knowing, you know, not just being humble that you don't know it all. I don't know it all, you know, um, yeah. and you, every, there's something to learn along the way. There's nuggets everywhere, you know, and success le leads uh, clues. And um, yeah, it's amazing, you know, so I, I can call on you guys if I'm struggling with anything and talk, whether it's family or business, you know, uh, we can share in our victories together. You know, it's awesome. And I love seeing, you know, both of your successes uh it's inspiring it motivates me um and it makes me feel proud you know and it's not a competition thing at all for me you know it's awesome it's like uh more of like a brother yeah. you know and i love it Absolutely yes. Love it. yes yes <laughs> yes yeah. so we'll talk about christian hey, what about you for me the same thing i think uh, you know being in business for 18 years um uh, you know i worked on the business for quite a bit uh, you know in the last maybe four four years i started stepping out of the business and delegating responsibilities i didn't have a lot of time to be going to networking events or associations or networking events but um actually there was one time when i was um, i was watching a little bit of tv and i look at the univision uh, uh they had a commercial and i saw you ricky on the uh, they had a really? univision uh, <laughs> video. I was like oh who's, who's ricky and i really enjoy what you did you know in terms of the commercial i was like wow just looking to empower the the cleaning industry, you know, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, man, I, you know, you inspire me, you know, you inspire me, like, wow, okay, he's been in the business yeah. for almost 10 years, he's growing nationally, getting outreach, you know, I want to, I want to learn, I want to know how he's doing it, because I've been in the business for 18 years, but sometimes when you're working so much on the business, you forget about mm -hmm. everything else, right? Yeah. And yeah. Until yeah. you step out and start seeing a little bit of the more clear vision of, of where we can lead ourselves. So I then I decided to go into the cleaning and cocktails on the second event where I met Robert. And as soon as we met with Rob, same thing that he was saying. I was like, hey, Rob, where are you from? Oh, my father's from Guayaquil. Oh, I'm from Ecuador, right? <laughs> yeah, just connected right there. Yeah, it was yeah. just like, a, we knew each other, right? It's just like we knew yeah, each other. We exactly. just hit it up. Oh, you're in Jersey? Well, it's okay. We're still in the same market, yeah. but I don't know. There was yeah. no competition. There's it, it no was competition. A, it, no, there, yeah. well, there was none. And also, um, he explained to me about the industry that he's at. He's more on the restaurant side. I'm not even in New York City yet. Recently, I'm actually part of my growth opportunities to go into New York City because we became a union company. But before mm -hmm. that, we were not in New York City. We were on the outside bars. So, and then from there, I had the opportunity to meet. I met you, Ricky, at that time. And uh, I just saw so many people, right? And when I've been working yeah. on the business for so many 
years. It was it was a lonely role, right? And then I saw everybody mm -hmm. empowering, and and I said, you know what? Maybe there is a value here. Maybe the, the opportunity or what I learned, I can also give back, right? I think that would be great. And also uh, the humility piece of it, Robert. I think we hit it mm -hmm. off too because uh, he seemed very genuine, authentic, and humble. For me, that's a that's a big thing, right? So that attracted mm -hmm. me to you, Rob, to you, Rick, as well. And, yeah. you know, no matter how big we are or whether, you know, how many employees we got, whether we have a, a few thousands or whatever it is, or millions of dollars, you still want to know, you're still you, right? And, yeah. and we still yeah. care about who we are, whether we are dealing with smaller companies or bigger companies. And I think when we go to that event, the last one that we did, the cleaning and cocktails in, mm -hmm. in Washington, it's just everybody putting it together and, uh, and everybody empowering each other, right? So yeah. for me, that give me that gives me great inspiration to keep moving forward. Like, oh wow, you know, we're not alone. There's other companies that wants to do the same thing. Let's keep moving yeah. forward, right? Let's keep helping each other out. And then you came with your technology too. I was like, oh wow, not only is he now coming up with the cleaning piece of it, you know, empowering the industry, but now you bring in technology into yeah. into the cleaning industry. I was like, wow, you know, I never really look used to. Um, be fascinated with technology, but when you started speaking about technology, you're like, well, maybe there's something here. And then that's how I, I joined into Route, Route Plus and everything else to it, because I started looking at a different perspective. I had to run the business mm -hmm. yeah, because yeah. I was wrong. I was in the business for many years and I was in the last maybe four or five years, I was able to step up, but I saw a tremendous growth, um, almost like a hundred percent growth, like 200% growth in the next the last maybe four or five mm -hmm. years. We, we grew tremendously. Um, our industries that we are, where we work with commercial uh, office buildings, multi-tenant multi -tenant office spaces, corporate offices, uh, medical facilities, and, and the biggest one that we still have, which we started 18 years ago, which were the banks, and we still have the same bank, but now we do it throughout uh, three states, yeah. uh, New York, New Jersey, and, and Connecticut. We do about 150 locations throughout three states. Um, and then we're looking to expand uh, not only now regionally, but nationally, by using the technology that um, Ricky has created on the marketplace, which I want to be able to to work with in terms of um, creating those relationships with affiliate partners, which I think I can see there's a great potential there that, that we can partner mm -hmm. with them, with the smaller yeah. companies and give them so opportunities. Good. Yeah, so yeah. Christian, another Love great it. segue. I didn't mean to make this segue, <laughs> but again, you guys, as we wrap up, right? Like Christian, you touched on it, but you know, or actually both of you guys, Robert, think about what you, you know, where you came from and Christian, where you came yeah. from and where I came from. Uh, again, the people, most of the people that listen and watch in, they're both large, but they're also mostly small contractors. What you guys have proven and what we've been talking through is again, we started at zero, zero. Yeah. We started at the right from the bottom. Now we're coming up, uh, different walks of life, different paths, uh, different stories, but what you guys have proven, and this is why I wanted to bring you guys both on together. You know, I, I usually do the one-on-ones, but when people have just such good stories that resonate together, I like <laughs> to bring them both on. Uh, yeah. But but you guys have not only shown that it can be done, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Community is everything. Camaraderie is everything. Humility yep. is everything because we're always learning. I don't care who mm -hmm. you are. I learned right. something just two weeks ago from 150000 a year business taught me something because I actually listened to what they were saying. Um, our industry is hard as hell, very fragmented, but all that yeah. means what opportunity. So opportunity there's a shit, yeah. but the opportunity is going to come if we work together. Like yeah. you're talking about partnerships, Christian, right? Mm -hmm. Robert, me and you have always talked about what, you know, how it is yeah. to grow through subcontractors. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But just the fact that we're talking through each other, how, Leave something for the audience. And what I want to say as far as leave something is this is hard, right? We all have talked about economics, finance, chief financial, AP, training, customer service, sales. Think about it, you guys. There's like 15 departments in a cleaning company. Mm -hmm. To build a good, successful cleaning company, you've got to have a lot of shit dialed in, right? Yeah. So what would you say to those that feel they may be stuck right now and they're, they're working in the business. They've only got one go-to person. How, what, what are some key moments or key things that they should think about to get to that next level? Like anything you guys can relate to leave the audience with, um, that mm -hmm. again, share the experience, have, give a shared experience. Right. You want <laughs> <laughs> there's probably more than one there's more than one but... i think uh i think for for me on the on that piece will be 
obviously there's so many things that we can do, but I ultimately, I will have to say, uh, believe, be happy with what you have, right? Uh, at this moment, mm -hmm. um, be grateful for what you have because there are going to be opportunities to come, but be happy with who you are while you're working for what you want, right? And let the, let the progression uh, be your motivation, right? Let the progress be your motivation to be able to push you forward. Um, because on my end, uh, discipline and the obsession and the customer and the, in a customer obsession is much, much f f uh, better than the, the than passion. And, uh, you know, become a better version of yourself every day, be a better version of yourself, learn and, and look at that and understand where you come from and, and push yourself because there are other opportunities. I came here to this country not knowing any English when I was 12 years old and here I am, take myself as an inspiration that impossible mm -hmm. can be possible, right? We can make things happen if we support each other. I'm open to help anyone, you know, and I'm open to help. I wish we had these, uh, you know, many yeah. years ago, I would <laughs> you know, imagine where we would have been, right? Where we would be, but now there's a, yeah. we're yeah. creating this, uh, this network, this uh, empowerment of, of the cleaning industry, whether they're small business or minority or the companies that, that we're putting together or that you're putting together, Ricky, but ultimately I would say, believe in yourself. Guarantee, because if you're mm -hmm. able to believe in yourself, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to change the world and change the way people think about cleaning, which is part of my mission, right? Uh, yeah. Impact the people's lives and, and create employment mm -hmm. and serve the communities where we where we clean our buildings, right? For me, that's the biggest thing and the biggest takeaway for for everyone. Andale, si se puede, si se puede, si se puede, si se puede. Where are you? Sure, I, I would say, um, you know. Uh, kind of to Christians know, you know, believing in yourself and persistence. It's all about persistence. It's about not giving up uh, three feet from gold, right? That, that's a book out there. But, uh, and learning as much as you can, you know, there's so much, you know, again, to Christian's point, like I wish we had cleaning cocktails 10 years ago, and, <laughs> you know, all of this 10 years ago, you know, instead of just going at it alone and making a mistake here, backing up, going forward, making a mistake, backing up, you know, um, and it, it's a, you know, it's a journey. You have to remember to enjoy the journey and not obsess with, revenue and not obsessed with like the end game you know um and uh yeah there's so much info out there between podcasts books you know um you know people like you ricky that are you know sharing things all the time uh getting involved in you know bsea i would say getting um you know getting out there meeting other owners the amount of shared experiences and uh the brain trust that's out there mm -hmm. is incredible you know and you don't have to go out alone i'd recommend finding a mentor you know if you're a smaller company and coming up and um and not giving up, you know, and I would say, tactically speaking, you know, because that's how my brain works, you know, know your numbers, you know, you got to make sure your pricing's right, you know, uh, make sure you understand your true costs. There's help out there, you know, uh, invest, it might seem expensive at first, but investing in like a fractional CFO or a fractional company that can help you to uh, create a pricing model, KPIs, a dashboard, you know, knowing you got to know what your true cost is to make sure you're getting that right, that, that right margin. Once you have margin, you've got profit. Once you got the profit, then you can hire the right people, um, you know, to really scale. And I would say, uh, you know, really focusing, you know, um, going back to e -Myth, you know, working on the business versus in the business, yeah. you know, which is very hard to do when you're doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. You're the person that's got to hire, you know, hire the crew and someone doesn't show up and you got to go, you know, cover for them, you know, switch out a floor machine or a vacuum, you know, you're doing it all, uh, invoicing, all that crap. It's very difficult, but you know, blocking time and being conscious of your time, of how much time you're doing, that's actually the most important thing. You know, um, again, I'll credit the book, like the one thing, you know, I know you're, you're a fan of Dan Sullivan as well. You know, oh, yeah. um, it, you know, why not how, right? So not, not how are we going to, uh, sorry, who not how, not how are we going to do this? Who's going to do this? Who do I need? You know, we need to get this done, right? We need marketing. Yep. Who's going to do it? I can't do it. You know, who's going to do that? And little by little building that team around you, you know, yes. and once you have that and you can kind of get, into the, the strategic mindset of just focusing on the business and working on what's going to move my business, you know, getting 1% better every day and what's going to make the biggest impact on my business that I can do today, you know, and not getting caught up in just returning emails and uh, yeah. ordering supplies and, uh, you know, that, that busyness is always going to be there and someone else. Yeah. All right. Someone well, actually that enjoys doing that, you know. So think about, so I usually, you know, it always happens where I'm like, oh, guys, there's so many gems that were dropped. There's always yeah. gems that are dropped, but what I wanted to touch on and, and end with with people to hear this is there's a lot of emotion and storytelling that was just dropped between yeah. 
each, you know, Robert and Christian, there's got to be a lot of people that will resonate with you guys. So I'm, I mean, that's why I was excited to have you guys on because it's, it's not about the knowledge and the gems and the, the experience that you guys bring to the table. It's the reality, the genuine, yeah. the authenticity of this is a, a, a path to success that was just told right now, right? Is hard work, family, work ethic, determination, perseverance, all yep. those stages of growth is what we just talked about. And you guys are still right. living it. You guys are still doing yep. it. Um, you're not done. No, we're done yet. So yep. it's exciting. It's exciting. Cause you guys yep. may say this would have been cool 10 years ago to have, but, but we're here today. You have it now. Yeah. We have it now. Exactly. We're building a community. Um, cheers to you guys. Cheers. Cheers awesome. to the, thank you, thank cheers you so much. To, cheers. Cheers, uh, cheers to the beginnings. Cause we're just yeah. getting started. Yes. I love it. Cheers. Thank you. All right. So guys, thank you for tuning in another episode of cleaning cocktails. You're going to have all of Robert and Christian's information on the bottom. Uh, if it's in a YouTube link, you're going to see all their information. I stopped asking if you guys are okay with sharing because I'm just going to share your information. Cause I sure. know you guys already said, you guys are down to yeah. coach or mentor anybody. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys, absolutely. if the, and if the story is resonating, if anybody, if anything we said touched, touched you, um, reach out. It's not, it shouldn't be a lonely absolutely. world. It shouldn't be, uh, you're not by yourself. You just heard stories of store. These are the way we are growing our businesses every single day in the cleaning industry. Reach out to Robert, reach out to Christian, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for jumping in, uh, Robert and Christian. Thank you guys. I appreciate Thank your time. You. Thank you, Ricky. I love you, man. Love Thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Yeah. Take care. Christian, love you, man. Thank Take you, care. Rob. See you soon, okay?